Got Sprewell underneath the glass. Fires at the buzzer. No. The San Antonio Spurs win their first ever NBA championship. Nearly four years had passed since the Spurs captured the NBA crown, an achievement many years in the making for both the city of San Antonio and superstar David Robinson. For so long, this is what you dream about. And now you still, I can't even talk about it. I mean, it's incredible. I'm blessed. With Robinson and Tim Duncan, the Spurs looked to build a dynasty, but learned that staying atop the mountain was even harder than the climb itself. And the harshest lessons were administered by the LA Lakers, who destroyed the Spurs in the playoffs two years in a row, on their way to three straight titles. And now they're just raining embarrassment on the Spurs' heads. As they began the 2003 season, the Spurs were not just a team in search of redemption, but also a team in transition. Robinson had announced he would retire after the season, and a youth movement had begun in San Antonio, one that was filled with question marks. I guess we had to be patient more than anything and uh, get some answers. You know, we didn't really understand in the beginning of the year how people would come along. Is Steven Jackson going to be a player? Is Bono going to be a player? Is uh, Tony Parker's sophomore season going to show that he's just average? The early weeks of the season would only raise more doubts as the younger players endured their growing pains. Who was not sure about his starting five. Pop was not sure with Stephen Jackson. Manu was hurt. I didn't have a good start, you know, at the beginning of the year. So everything was kind of shaky. And the problems were becoming costly, as the Spurs were quickly losing ground in the Western Conference standings. We've still got a lot of young type mistakes out there out of inexperience. So we're hoping that we can continue to cut them bit by bit. Every time I did something wrong, I look at him and say, him shaking his head and all that, so I was trying to figure out what he wanted and what he didn't. Once seen as title contenders, the Spurs were losing to teams they should have been dominating. JT pulls up, falling back, yes, sir. hits it at the buzzer, That's and money. the Hawks have the victory. Duncan against Knight, drives on him, runs across the lane, shot, no good, rebound, ball tip, and it's over. With losses mounting and players struggling to find their way, Many teams might have seen their season spiral out of control, but the 2003 San Antonio Spurs were different. The Spurs had a unique support system, anchored by one of the game's most revered players, David Robinson. They also had hard-working Malik Rose, a holdover from their 1999 championship team. There was the hard-earned experience of reliable Bruce Bowen, and most importantly, a quartet of veterans in the twilight of their careers. Though their time in the spotlight had long since passed, they were willing to step back and embrace their new roles as guiding figures for the team. There has been a time going by in the course of a ball game where you look over your shoulder and you see Steve Smith talking to Steven Jackson. You see Danny Ferry leading us in cheers from the sideline. You see Steve Kerr, he's always had a point or two to get across and Kevin Willis using his manly father voice. The main thing is to always encourage that young guy to maintain his focus, don't get discouraged, don't get down himself, don't lose any confidence. And just letting guys know that, hey, just, just stay in there, stick together, and we'll be all right. And to complement their chemistry, the Spurs had an unselfish superstar, the reigning MVP. Tim Duncan really kicked it into gear. Timmy really became uh, our team leader. They look to Duncan. Duncan with the shot. Oh, big three, Tim Duncan. He's somebody who's naturally, intrinsically quiet, but I realized that he was going to have to step up in that regard, and he did that. He realized that he could have an effect on games even more than, than he was. For the win. Three seconds left against Carl Malone. The fall away. Yes! The Spurs win at the buzzer! Duncan. Duncan makes the move over. Tim Duncan! Like all of the game's true greats, Duncan had begun to raise the level of his teammates' play, and through their ups and downs, he had never lost faith in them. The biggest thing that's happened over the course of the year is how he's trusted his teammates, from Tony to Manu to Steven to Bruce to Malik to all of them. He's really embraced the entire team and, and what they can do for him and how they can take him to the next level. 
It really is Tim Duncan's team now. He's the guy that's slapping people on the back of the head, patting them on the butt when they do things well, demanding more when they're not executing or focusing, and that's good stuff. You know, that's Larry Bird stuff. Feeding off Duncan's leadership, the Spurs began to gel, and in the second half of the season, they would become the NBA's hottest team. Bowen again, wide open. Take that! <laughs> Another train! Oh, mama! Oh, Speedy! Speedy. I saw people learning and understanding that our system worked. Uh, some people learning and believing in what we did. Every win that we got, we got a little more confident. Tony going to run the two. Oh, he does it! He got With it! With 1.2 to play! Tony Parker drains it! Ending the season on a tear, San Antonio won 32 of its last 38 games, finishing the season with the league's best record. But before looking ahead to the postseason, the team set aside a night to look back at the career of David Robinson the man who had been the Spurs cornerstone since 1989. David has defined this franchise. His personality, his desire, love for the game, he really has made this franchise of a mold of him. He's been a friend, he's been like a brother. And it's gonna be hard to think about starting a game, going out on the court, getting ready for the ball to go up and not seeing David. We're here tonight to try to attempt to repay a man that's done so much for this community and done so much for this team. So many times we go to war with your values, your principles, and your morals. And they're firmly embedded in the backbone of this team. And I, for one, dread the day, you know, that you step into the locker room next year and you're not there. And you're not there on the court to be the, the heart and soul of this team. And I just want to say that we all are going to miss you and we love you and you're just special. Entering the postseason, the Spurs were intent on putting their past playoff failures behind them. But there was danger ahead in the eighth-seeded Phoenix Suns, who had beaten them three or four times in the regular season. And in game one, the Suns would battle them down to the wire. Stoudemire tries to oh! Amari Stoudemire oh hits a three to tie the game. And the Spurs take time with 7.9 left. Phoenix scared us. You know, it was a one and eight. We shouldn't win. We felt like we, you know, we, like something you had to win. And if the year, we didn't win, it would have been a disaster. And disaster would strike. Suns are out of timeouts. He missed. Robinson tips it. Stoudemire. Uh, Marbury has it. Here's Marbury on the drive. Hands it. Oh! Man, can you believe it? Stephon Marbury struggling all game. Comes out with the runner at the buzzer. To lose that first game, it, it, it really shook me out. I, I think it really shook all of us. There was a feeling in the locker room. There was a resolve that said, hey, we let this get away from us. We can't, you know, this is unacceptable. And we were up against the wall. Game two, second game in the playoffs already, we were basically facing a must-win situation. With the Spurs receiving an early wake-up call, their role players would rise to answer it. Jackson with a huge second quarter. Action Jackson. Ginobili for three. From downtown. Coming off of that loss, there was no doubt in any of our minds that we were going to come back and play very well and play very hard. And I think the losses have always kind of motivated us and almost given us a little bit of an edge because coming back, we, we knew it, this isn't going to happen again. We're not going to let it happen again. Not only was their determination growing stronger, so was their defense. And as they clamped down on the Suns, the Spurs would win three of the next four games. Jacobson, but it was tapped away. Wanted to go to Bruce Bowen. Is that Speedy? Clacks a good move. Give it to the guard. Speedy takes it home. Leading three games to two, the league's top team was demonstrating its superiority. All that remained was to finish off the upstart Suns and move on. But in game six, Phoenix showed no signs of cooperating, and the Spurs would again be tested. Great Popovich is really upset. Well, they smell blood, Gary. Somebody's bleeding. Right now, the Suns are going after it. They are kicking our ass physically. 
How many offensive rebounds? Oh, nine. Nine yeah. offensive rebounds and four turnovers. Because they're shoving it down our throat and we're back on our heel. But in the fourth quarter, the Spurs would show a resolve they hadn't always shown before as they look to close out the Suns. Duncan's going to come across the paint, brings it out to Jackson. Jackson with a look at the three, and he has just shot a dagger. And the Spurs now have retaliated. The time expires, and the Spurs move into the second round of semifinal round. Do you see any celebrating by the Spurs? I don't. We're thrilled to have been able to beat them, and I'm very, very happy we don't have to play them again. Awaiting San Antonio in the conference semifinals was their greatest nemesis, the three-time champion Lakers, who had knocked them out of the playoffs two straight years. But that was all history now to the Spurs. It wasn't just going to be about you know them just dominating because they showed up in the building. They were going to have to play as hard as we were in order to get victories. I was definitely looking forward to playing those guys because I wanted to be the one to end that so-called dynasty or whatever. I wanted to be on the team that beats those guys. It's a psychological thing. We felt like we matched up well with them. We felt like, you know, this is a team we can beat. Uh, but you got to beat them. You got to go play. The Lakers had the confidence and swagger of champions and seemed unfazed by the challenge of facing the league's best. You play the game with an elegance and a grace that is a joy to behold. Congratulations, Tim Duncan, 2002-2003, NBA Most Valuable Player. The honor for Duncan only seemed to provide extra fuel for Shaquille O'Neal. Here's Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal powering his way to the basket. And the series began with a familiar sense of frustration for the Spurs. Stops everybody on the board. But Tim Duncan was ready to show the Lakers that this year would be different. Duncan Whoa. for the power jam with the right hand. I'd say the crowd is back into it. Tim Duncan rejected it with authority. As he had done all season, Duncan would elevate his teammates' play as well, and the Spurs took control of the game. Two-man game with Duncan. Feeds Manu, cuts it inside, reverse slam dunk by Manu Ginobili. Wow! The San Antonio Spurs. In game two, a member of the Spurs supporting cast would steal the spotlight. Blocked by the Spurs, Duncan leads Bowen. Here's Bowen. Bruce Bowen on the third floor. Ryan putting the move on Bowen. Blocked by Bowen. How about Bruce Bowen? Bowen's suffocating defense had come to be expected, but another part of his arsenal would take the Lakers by surprise. Left corner, Bowen fires a three from there, it's good. Jackson in the front court. Right side for Bowen, open three, right corner. Yes, another three! Here's Bowen for three, yes! And that is a new San Antonio Spurs playoff record. That is his seventh, seventh from downtown. Taking a commanding two games to none lead, the Spurs headed to Los Angeles with a growing belief that they were finally ready to topple the Lakers. Our confidence is at an all-time high, and we have two of them. We're halfway there. We just have to get by these guys. It's, you know, one of the biggest obstacles in history. That obstacle would be evident in Game 3 as the Lakers announced their arrival into the series. The Lakers had rediscovered their championship form, and as they charged past the Spurs in a runaway victory, they made it clear that their dynasty was alive and well. And O'Neal leads the break. O'Neal looks to go all the way. Solid from start to finish. The Lakers win it. Yet the loss seemed just a bump in the road for the Spurs when they took a 16-point lead in Game 4. A sizzling start for the Spurs but they still faced their two biggest roadblocks, Shaq and Kobe. For three straight years, the duo had answered every challenge, and now they would respond once again. Oh, Willis couldn't handle Jackson's pass. What a Everybody goes down, and here goes Kobe, look out! It's all hustle.
hustle, J.D. The Lakers are letting it all hang out right now. Off the glass, didn't get it. Shaq, though, the rebound. Another. That time it's going down. Spurs defense is playing like they did in game three. Expecting the Lakers to just stop playing. That's not going to happen. you got to take it. You guys got your hands full with that guy underneath. You three guys are supposed to have your ass in there. Nobody's going to give us the rebound. we got to go get it. Go, come on, let's go. But ultimately, Shaq would prove to be too much, carrying the Lakers to a comeback victory. With their second half meltdown, the Spurs had lost their grip on the game and the series as well. We had too much confidence after two games against the Lakers. And then we went out to LA and we, we laid an egg. And the Lakers showed that they were the defending champs. What a monumental collapse. The Lakers have evened it at two games apiece. Coming home for game five, the once confident Spurs were now searching for any help they could get. Our backs are against the wall. We don't want to go to LA down 3-2 need this game desperately so if any of you believe in prayer out there please pray for us that was sort of a wake-up call we said hey we can't we can't afford to keep flirting with this we gotta go out and jump on these guys from the first whistle and uh and, and just put it on them re-energized the spurs exploded out of the gate this time they would try to put the game well beyond the lakers reach And they seem to be achieving their goal, building a huge lead, with everything going their way. Duncan, what a shot! He knows that was very fortunate. As the fourth quarter began, the Spurs appeared to have the game in hand, but Kobe Bryant was hardly ready to concede. Bryant for three, yes! Bryant guarded by Ginobili out front. Kobe pulls up, fakes the jumper, now takes one over Manu, and that one is good for Kobe Bryant. We got comfortable with the lead and stopped playing, and Kobe just was the competitor he was and just took over the game. Bryant in the front court. Bowen is out on Kobe Bryant. Bryant dances and shoots the three ball. Good. Kobe Bryant continues to cook. We almost played not to lose, and the lead just started dwindling and dwindling. Here's Bryant with the step and the bucket. What a move by Kobe Bryant. And Greg Popovich wants a timeout, so the Lakers have come back. The Spurs had seen another lead evaporate. Now, up by two with seconds left, they tried to hang on. I was worried. I just wanted, to, wanted the clock to run out, wanted to, to, to get that game done with. The Spurs would gather themselves for one last stand, trying desperately to avoid another late game collapse. Shaq up high, played by Robinson, down to 10. Bryant trying to shake off Bowen. Here's Ori for three. Robinson with the rebound that was in and out. My heart dropped, and, and when it popped out, I was I I, I, I froze. I, I really I didn't know what to do. That shot goes down, it would have been a nightmare for us. Kobe Bryant kicks it out to an open Robert Ory. Watch this ball. It is halfway in and back out again. Things happen in the playoffs. There's always one or two little moments that are kind of magical for you. And either they go for you or they go against you. And those are the things you kind of remember. And I think that shot right there is one of the things for me, I'll remember as kind of one of the things that kind of confirmed in my heart, it's our time. Returning to L.A., the Spurs were anxious to deliver the knockout blow. Game six, we knew we didn't want to get in life. It was a great road team. I mean, going back game seven to San Antonio, you never know what can happen. They know what it takes. They've been here so many times. But we knew in our hearts and our minds that we were the better team. Welcome back, everybody, to Staples Center. Game six of the Western Conference semifinals, the three-time defending world champion Lakers facing a situation they have rarely looked at right in the eye during the Phil Jackson era, and that is an elimination game. Once again, the Spurs would jump out to a big lead. Nothing but that for Tim Duncan. And Tim Duncan would make sure that it didn't slip away. Right now, it's a steady diet of Tim Duncan being fed 
to the Los Angeles Lakers. Tim Duncan is on a mission. We're seeing a performance today. This is what MVPs do. Tim Duncan just continues <laughs> to go wild. They did that normal switch, putting Shaq on Timmy. And when Timmy went to work on him, everybody just followed suit. And I don't think Shaq or the Lakers were ready for that. Tony Parker takes a three and Willis slams it home. Look Throw it down. We were ready. We, we didn't want to uh, to give them a chance. Ginobili is guarded by Kobe Bryant. Screened by Duncan. Manu takes it all the way inside. Off balance. Layup is good. It's all San Antonio. They're pounding the Lakers. This is a blowout. It really is. It's 22 right now. We kind of put it together. We put it got to the point where we said, you know what? This isn't going to happen again. And as they dominated the Lakers, the Spurs sent an unmistakable message. Until you kind of shut that door with no question on their home floor, I think, you know, that, that there's always going to be questions about who we are. It left no doubt in anyone's mind that we were the better team. Finishers with class. That's right. That's no, right. No huge celebration under that. One, 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 one guy up. Yeah, he's sure. been bugging me all night. Yeah. Finishers got it. Okay, got it. Got it. Eric Fisher and the rest of the Lakers knows that it's over. The San Antonio Spurs are headed to the Western Conference Finals. And the Lakers' run at the top of the NBA is over. This is going to go down as the greatest victory in the history of the Spurs organization. We beat them, and uh, you know, saw the way they, you know, left the court, and just it was just a great feeling. It was a great feeling beating them. We've been put down by these guys uh, the last couple of years, so um, uh, that in itself was 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 big for for uh, this team for for me, uh, not ending another season to them. Winning was something that we needed to, to do. We needed to get over the hump and get that monkey off our backs. So it was, it was a special series for us. It was almost like another championship because they had been so great. They'd been the best. And to beat them was, we had to calm ourselves down to continue to go on. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Texas Shootout. <laughs> San Antonio and Dallas meeting for the Western Conference title for the first time. Tim Duncan knew the Mavericks were loaded with firepower, led by their main weapon, Dirk Nowitzki. But as the battle of the Lone Star State began, the star shining brightest was Duncan. Ginobili on the drive back to Duncan, coming the other side, the wraparound pass to Duncan. Though the Mavericks were known for their high-octane offense, the Spurs would roar right past them in the first half. Building an 18-point lead, San Antonio seemed ready to leave Dallas in the dust. Parker on the run, three on two. Parker with the teardrop. Which team is the Mavericks right now? <laughs> I can't believe it. Nelson <laughs> wants to slow things down here. To change the game's pace, Don Nelson would have his team foul Bruce Bowen a notoriously poor free throw shooter. Right now? Yeah, like a hack and check. Why? Like a hack and check. Make sure it's not flagrant. This is unusually early. Greg, did they tell you that they're doing this on purpose? Yeah. It's hacking? OK, sorry, I didn't want to. The strategy would pay off as the Spurs lost their momentum and the Mavericks came back, giving themselves a chance to win in the final seconds. Finley puts it down, attacks quickly, driving layup, yes! Finley has given the Mavericks a one-point lead. In a stutter, the Dallas Mavericks come from an 18-point deficit to defeat the San Antonio Spurs and take game one. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to what now amounts to the single most important game of the season for the San Antonio Spurs. Lose tonight. They'll head to Dallas down 0-2 with virtually no chance of coming back against the Mavericks. Just as they had against Phoenix, San Antonio would respond with a firm resolve. And with Malik Rose delivering 25 points off the bench, they would even the series. Rose spins too fast, slams it. And the Spurs didn't stop there. As the series shifted to Dallas, Tony Parker led the way with 29 points in game three. Duncan and Parker are bringing the Spurs back. Get back to Parker, driving layup is good. Down the left baseline. Tony Parker has put on a remarkable show. And then in game four, it was Manu Ginobili who would rise to the occasion. Ginobili with a sensational tip. 
With Dirk Nowitzki sidelined, the Spurs would go up three games to one and were ready to close out the series back home. Dallas Mavericks had a great year. They got a good little team, but it's over tonight. And it seemed all but over when the Spurs took a 19-point lead. But Dallas would stage a stunning second-half comeback. No matter what you say, there is no substitute for passion and energy from a basketball team. Dallas showed a lot of heart. They lost their, you know, their star player, and they still kept coming at us. Shout out to with a collapse in a remarkable comeback by an underman Dallas team. Back in Dallas for game six, the Spurs free fall would continue. And by the third quarter, the Mavs led by 15. And everything going wrong for the Spurs right now. With their frustration growing and a seventh game looming, the Spurs found themselves in need of a hero. We had to find somebody to knock down a shot, so it just seemed logical to give him a chance to do it. And now here is Steve Kerr. I had nothing to lose at that point. I haven't played the entire playoffs. Nobody's going to expect anything out of me. He's in the left corner. He launches it. How about Steve Kerr on his first attack? When that first one went, I thought, this could be my night. Outside, Kerr will fire the three. It's Kerr for three. Yes, Stevie Kerr has tied it at 71. You talk about the Iceman. He's the second coming of the Iceman because he was on the bench there cold as ice. And he came in and buried some big time shots. Kerr with another three. Yes, another three from Stevie Kerr at 74 71, baby. It was just like a flood all at once. Totally unplanned. And right now, Dallas doesn't want a double because this man. He gets it back. He's going again. Can't they defend him? He's hit another three ball. And when he dropped him in, you know, we were all pumped up. I mean, you saw us jumping up and down, and we were having a great time. Stevie Kerr! This is unbelievable. Everybody's off the Spurs bench. This is one of the best nights of my career. There's always a chance to have a moment, just one moment. And, uh, and tonight was one of those, and it, it just feels great. In the East, Jason Kidd and the New Jersey Nets were making their own run to the finals. Kidd starts to make his move, six seconds. Kidd driving right of the lane, goes baseline right, fadeaway jumper, around oh. and in. Jason Kidd with a clutch shot from the right baseline. With 10 straight playoff wins, the Nets also earned a shot at redemption, a year after being swept by the Lakers. They are the back-to-back -back NBA Eastern Conference champions for the second straight year. This year, unlike last year, we're not just happy to get there. You know, we feel we can win a championship with what we have right here. Welcome to San Antonio! The first game for the NBA Finals! Go Spurs go! You got the real kid here, Tony Parker. We don't need no Jason. And this is to the Nets. Gonna chop them up like litters. Good evening and welcome to game one. It's the New Jersey Nets, the number two seed from the East against the San Antonio Spurs, the number one seed from the West. The team's ready, we're loose. The Greenhouse are ready to get out and do some running. A couple of miles of yeah, the tape there. We're playing for one thing. I brought this out. Because this was my first. And once you win this, there's nobody that can take it away from you. Stand in front of these guys. We're gonna let them know we're here, right from the tip. Right from the tip. Hey man, somebody got to do it, baby. This is the first time the two former outstanding ABA franchises have ever come together. In fact, the doctor, Julius Irving and George Gervin, will be out there for the ceremonial opening talk. And once the finals tipped off, it didn't take long for New Jersey to take command. The tap controlled by Kidd. Jump with the first shot is in, and the Nets quickly jump ahead by a deuce. Power attack on the right. The jump shot is on the money. The Nets, they are razor sharp. Here comes Kidd, looking for that fast break. The Spurs are back, picking at the Kittles. Here comes this three, good. And everything, folks, is breaking New Jersey's way. These guys are shooting open jumpers. Our game is defense, and we're not doing it the way we played it all year long. Can't even drive that guy. Just drive him. Go to the hole. Be aggressive. With the Spurs down early, spark plugs Manu Ginobili and Malik Rose would provide them with a jump start. Malik on the right baseline against Rodney Rogers. Jumper, good! 
Malik Rose with a big basket. Parker penetrates all the way in. Gets a pass off out front. And there's a look for Rose. He's going to penetrate. Left corner, Parker. Out to the wing. Ginobili for three. That's the bottom of the Great ball movement by San Antonio. Jefferson out front. And here's a steal by Rose. Rose has got clear sailing, and he will lay it up and in. Right now, the Spurs are out working and out thinking the Nets. Propelled by their subs, San Antonio had drawn even by halftime. But heading into the second half, they hadn't shaken New Jersey's confidence. Come on, baby. Come on, man. Let's win this game. Let's believe it. Nets on three. One, two, three. Yes. But in the third quarter, the Nets would suddenly find themselves overwhelmed and overrun by the Spurs, who began a charge that just couldn't be stopped. Back to Robinson. Trying to throw it. Hit the back of the iron. He gets it right back from Jackson. Score, David Robinson. Oh, he's going circa 1992 right now. Parker drives, attacks left side, wrap around from the right, a beautiful drive through the lane by young Tony Parker. I don't want to call plays. I want us to be in motion. I want to get that outlet out. Let's get down there. Get everybody involved. I don't want to go lock in their defense. It's a long pass breaking. Jackson fast break slam. And Duncan has taken over control of this game in the second half. And the Spurs are beating the Nets at their own game. Duncan's got it at the top of the key. He's going to drive it inside off the Robinson slam dunk. And with the Nets on the ropes, a patient Tim Duncan was now ready to go for the kill. In game one against the Nets, he just waited, waited, bided his time, waited for the defense and the game to settle. And then he just took over and carried us to victory. Duncan, the turnaround jump shot, he's on the money. Tim Duncan's taking charge now. 27 for Duncan. San Antonio closing in on a game one victory. And fittingly, Duncan would add the finishing touch. Duncan's way low. Oh, yes, the one-handed slam. Williams couldn't handle the two-time MVP. And how sweet it is in San Antonio. Get the Cerveza out. They're going to the whip. This was never in doubt since early in the third quarter. You know, they have the MVP, and, uh, you know, he played like that tonight. Game play, top eight. Bang, bang. Kareem. Kareem number two. Uh, sure. Stockton. Stockton number three. Malone. Malone number four. Robert Parrish. Robert Parrish number one. Ding, ding, ding. The Spurs were feeling relaxed and confident as they got ready for game two. And their confidence seemed well founded. The Spurs picked up where they left off in game one, soaring to an early lead. Jackson drives baseline, reverse layup is good for Steven Jackson. There is a 7 0 lead. We're three minutes into the opening quarter. Duncan has just given the ball back to Parker on the drive. Down the left baseline. It's all San Antonio. It's classic basketball. The Spurs are doing everything right, and the Nets are struggling. Put them in a tailspin. Put them in a tailspin right now. Right now, we put them in a tailspin. They don't recover from this. Let's go. But as San Antonio looked to deliver the early knockout, New Jersey would answer with a counterpunch of their own. And it came from their superstar, Jason Kidd. Just as Tim Duncan had dominated game one for the Spurs, Kidd was now putting his own stamp on game two while putting the Nets on his shoulders. And Jason Kidd suddenly became Jason Kidd. Woo! Oh, crossover on Duncan. Oh, Kidd weaves no. through everybody and scores. Oh, no. He is putting on a historical level performance. A tough shot rolls in for Jason Kidd. 58 to 45. Biggest lead of the night, biggest lead of the series for New Jersey. All eyes had been on the duel of point guards. Kidd against 21-year-old Tony Parker. And now, Parker would lead the Spurs back. Parker wants it himself. Inside of Kidd with a move. Floater in the lane is good for Tony Parker. Parker motors past Kidd. The teardrop. Got it! What once was 15 is down to three. Parker on the dribble. Let's see what he does this time. Flips up a wild shot and it goes. He's made it a one-point game. But Kidd had been finding the answers all night 
and now he would find one more. New Jersey's up only a point. Here comes Kidd. Drives hard. Tough shot. Yes! It seemed to be the final dagger, but the Spurs still had some life. Kerr gets it into Jackson from the right corner for three. It's good! So this game is not over yet. Down by two, with time running out, the Spurs would have one last shot. Now eight seconds left in the game. Kids on Parker. Parker motors right by. Kicks it over. Jackson with a three! Might be a winner. Not this time. It's over. The Nets have survived it. They won it. They win it on the road. 87-85, and it's going back to the Meadowlands at a game apiece. Back to New Jersey. 1-1. One, one. Hey, we broke our streak. We broke our streak. The scene has shifted east for the next three games between the New Jersey Nets and the San Antonio Spurs. But after their dramatic win in game two, the Nets are determined to hold serve at home. There'll be no kidding around in game three. Jason Kidd is the real MVP. Tim Duncan. Bye-bye. <laughs> Prepare to lose, Duncan. They're going to win. They're going down. You know, you usually talk to folks and they feel that, well, San Antonio's rolling, or, well, New Jersey's going to even the series up tonight. I get folks arguing both ways. This could be a wide-open affair. This is the key game. You come home, you've done your job on the road, you got one of them now. you got to set the tone right now. you got to make your fans believe. you got to feed them. you got to feed them early, get off to a great start, and then the world belongs to you. This is what's happening right here. In the Meadowlands tonight. Are you ready? Energized by the crowd and their defense, the Nets would grab the early lead. Martin takes it away from him. High pick and roll, and they've turned it over off of it. Here comes Kittles. Beautiful two-handed slam on the pass from Jason Kidd. Big problems getting into an offensive flow here. They just cannot get this offense going. The Spurs are looking very Fire. Everybody relax a little bit. You're hanging in tough. We're not playing very well, but, you know, you're right in the ball game. Everybody's got to relax a little bit. The Spurs would rely on their own stubborn defense to stop New Jersey in its tracks. Martin's going to drive it inside, runs right into Bowen, loses the ball. Duncan picks it up. And Harris coming back the other way on the attack. Block shot, Ginobili. Drives it inside, bounce past the baseline. Jefferson got caught, throws it away. Ginobili's got it. Manu with a three on two. Parker, tough catch in the paint, and he's got that little jump hook. The fewest points in the half by one team, New Jersey's 30, has tied the finals record. While both teams had been shackled on offense, the Nets would finally break free in the third quarter. Uh, he has what a pass to Jefferson. The Nets were actually the best defensive team that we'd faced all season. They were the toughest team we played in the playoffs, mentally, physically. They really battled. They were an unbelievable opponent. Don't worry about it, right? Can't do nothing about it. We gotta stay up. We gotta stay positive. We gotta just keep going hard. With the Spurs needing a spark, Malik Rose would provide a jolt of electricity. Malik's gonna take Martin all the way to the hole. Rose throws it over Matumbo. Matumbo let Rose have a tomahawk on him. Wow. Parker puts it down, gives it to Malik Rose, splits the D. Good. A driving lamp. Malik goes with the left hand and lays it up and in. Malik Rose has been huge. The Spurs had taken the lead, but still had to hold off one last Nets run. I got him. Hey, yeah. Lucius is big right here. Yeah. He's the guy that hit the yeah. shot. Yeah. And as the ball went to Lucius Harris, Manu Ginobili would be ready. Over the left hand side, Harris, and it's stolen by Ginobili. Ginobili with a steal. Another huge steal by Manu Ginobili. And then Ginobili would crush any hopes New Jersey had left with one final blow. To the right corner, Ginobili baseline jumper, good! Manu Ginobili with a huge basket. The Spurs have snatched it right back after losing by two in game two on their home floor at SBC Center. They come back and beat the Nets here in New Jersey. How ironic.
ironic it is that the San Antonio Spurs heading into game four tonight don't even want to play another home game. They'd rather finish the series here in New Jersey. If the Nets don't win this game tonight, their spirits will be broken. Time for the San Antonio Spurs to go for the kill tonight. One, two, three. Yeah. From the start, Richard Jefferson would give the Nets the lift they so desperately needed. Jefferson attacks, two-handed slam from Richard Jefferson. Oh. Richard Jefferson, get out of the way. That is a throwdown. How will San Antonio respond because the Spurs seem to have left their game at the hotel. And as the Spurs fell behind, it seemed their fiercest intensity was coming from the sidelines. Duncan misses the layup. Collins fouled, I believe, by David Robinson. Oh Popovich gets a tee. Popovich going to get a second one. He's cut off. Buff knows exactly what he's doing here. He's got to do something to get this team going. The method to the coach's madness seemed to have its effect as the Spurs would make their way back with help from their battle-tested veterans. Kevin Willis in the lane. The old man will be 41 in September, has six points in the corner. Steal by Bowen. Bowen going coast to coast. Third quarter dominated by the Spurs. They've come all the way back. You just keep on going hard in that rim. Make them make the call. Make them make the call. Heeding their coach's words, the Spurs would fight for any edge that might turn the game their way. And both teams battled for control through a tightly contested fourth quarter. In the closing moments, the Nets managed to grab a three-point lead, but the Spurs would still have one last chance to tie the game. Gonna hit Mono. Let's see if we make a good hard cut, make him guard you. Make sure we do not jump. Don't leave your feet on the three. Let's make sure we get our hands straight up. Again, a two don't hurt. Barry waits. Ginobili checks out. Long pass, Ginobili. Pump fakes open. Here he fires. No. Air ball. Put back at the buzzer. That'll do it. So New Jersey holds on to win it. It's a W or it's an L. Then uh, they came up with the win. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what the hell's going to happen. I just hope that the good guys win. We had a Bruce Bowen, what's my quality first when we're in deplacement? We've got a game tomorrow, so you guys are going to lighten up on the press a little bit, right? You can't talk to those guys 24 hours a day, Tony. I don't care if they're from Paris or not, right? All they want is a story. You want to win basketball games. So you can spend some time on the I'm game and not be all nice those like you, Pop. I'm just trying to be nice <laughs> with your The thing about Pop is he's very direct. When it doesn't go smoothly, Pop doesn't hesitate to call somebody on it. I don't hear anybody calling ball. Nobody's got the ball. Speedy's coming, nobody's got him. That's Jason running right up our butts. Nobody's got him. Let's go. What's different about Pop, he treats his superstar. Tim, Tim Duncan and David Robinson are arguably gonna be, in my opinion, two of the best players to ever play this game. Pop treats them exactly the same as he treats Steven Jackson or Tony Parker. When they make a mistake, he tells them. He tells them directly. Look at it. Hold up, hold up. That's too slow. Let's do it again. I don't see anybody sprinting. You're sprinting down there to try to catch up with those guys because Jefferson's running your ass off. Let's go. When you're young, you kind of be lazy sometime in practice, you know, and he's always behind me, try to push me. Be ready. You're either going to be driving that closeout, you're going to be shooting it, Get that body ready. Me and Tim, you know, we're the two guys, you know, he's always yelled the most on us, you know, because he expects a lot from us, you know, and uh, and me, you know, he's a little bit like father and son. Good concentration, Tony. Keep following through. Everyone, don't let up. Rest of your life, everyone, follow through, follow through. Rest of your life. The reason he can be as demanding he is with the team is because of his nurturing capabilities, not only on the court, but off the court. Keep shooting. Keep shooting it, keep shooting it, follow through, follow through. Be brave, be aggressive. There is no player on this team that's exempt from his, his uh, critique and his coaching. Uh, there is no player that's exempt from his love. And because of that, I think they care for each other more so than any team I've ever seen. Welcome to Game 5 of the NBA Finals 2003. The Nets and the San Antonio Spurs all deadlocked at 2-2. Two two. Tonight, a sold-out crowd for the biggest game in Nets franchise history. A lot of energy, baby. Keep that same intensity that we had in the last game. Let's just take it up another notch. And in this pivotal game, 
New Jersey would come out ready. Kent turns baseline, jump shot, good over Parker. Well, that's a terrific sign for New Jersey. And a steal by Kittles. Coast to coast for Kittles. Look out. It was clear that the Nets were playing with a sense of desperation. He's out of bounds. Start. T. Right here. Iron, Iron, I am trying to be patient with you. I understand what the game is about. Jefferson to Kid. Kid pull up jumper. He's feeling it. Watch out. When you're guarding the guy in the zone, he's got the ball. Your hands got to be up, and you got to be contesting him like man to man. That's your guy in that zone. We let Kid just spot two shots, and somebody standing right in front of him doing nothing. The Spurs would begin altering shots and changing the course of the game, using their defense as the catalyst to kick their offense into high gear. Duncan right back to Ginobili on the break, trying to tie it up and does. And Speedy Claxton has done yeoman duty as a backup point guard. He hits now an 18-foot jump shot. That's what's been missing. Deflected Ginobili on a steal. Ginobili for the breakout. One-handed slam. Look at the Spurs coming together here, forcing Byron Scott to take yet another timeout. Trailing by eight points at halftime, the Nets would look to their leader to bring them back. Ducking in too far, loses the handle. Jefferson comes back, three on two again. Bowen quickly back, and Kidd hits a three-footer in the lane. Nets for the lead this time. Kidd, post, Boxton, got it! On the turnaround for 13 feet, Jason Kidd puts the Nets ahead, 50-49 here. You got it. Come on, man. 12 minutes. With control of the game and the series up for grabs, young Tony Parker would answer the call as he lifted the Spurs in the fourth quarter. Parker jump shot, yes! Ho, ho, ho! What do we have here? Well, the Nets go on these runs, but the Spurs just keep plodding away. Three yards in a cloud of dust. Hey, I know they're getting back. You know, two or three guys. He's pushing, we still need you guys to run. With the Spurs about to put the game away, the Nets would suddenly break loose for one final run. Jefferson oh. throws it in! Jefferson. Jason Kidd to Jefferson. Inside Jefferson score! And that's going to be Duncan. Jefferson's driving layup has made it 78-76. Get away from me! Get win. away from me! Hope is alive for New Jersey. Don't get lazy here. Every time we go up, it's like we're at a picnic party. Why do you think somebody's gonna give you a championship? Come on! If you want the go take it. After playing just two minutes the entire series, Steve Kerr would step in to face an inspired Nets team, a frenzied crowd, and a critical situation. They load Duncan. You give it back. Here comes Stevie's three ball. Yes! <laughs> Stevie Kerr! Now Martin back to the basket. Desperate, bad pass. Ginobili going to try to run it out. Keeps coming. Layups. Good for Ginobili on the steal. Now here comes Parker off the dribble. A high pick and roll into Kerr in the corner. Kerr the pull up 17 footer off the dribble. Steve Kerr. Oh my! Once again, Kerr had delivered when the Spurs needed him most. I love it. So San Antonio is going to take it home to Texas with a chance on Sunday to win the NBA championship. Yeah, we're about back, baby. That's the Spurs I know. That's the Spurs team I know right there. We're to get that one, boys. We need one more. We need one more. What do you think would be appropriate here? Uh, a few wise words from the coach or uh, get together and uh, leave the coach out of it totally and just move on because I don't have anything worth to say anyway. Yeah, right. One more. Let's do it. One more. One more. One more. One more. Way to bounce One back. More. Way to bounce One, back. Two, three, Welcome back to San Antonio, Texas. Game six of the NBA Finals. Tonight's the night we reclaim our fame. It's going to end tonight. It's about the San Antonio Spurs, baby. Yeah!
It's come and get it day for the San Antonio Spurs as they try to win the NBA title. Now they have a chance to eliminate New Jersey in game six of the NBA Finals. We come here for two games. We come here, we didn't come all this long way to play just one game. Two game series for us. Somebody got to do it. Somebody, somewhere. Somebody, somewhere got to do it. The Spurs, they have a chance to do something really special here. You never really get very many of those in life. You don't want to let those slip away. But it's also about David Robinson riding the last wave of the day. We have come to the end of the line. Blow it out, big men. Blow it out. Tim Duncan had hoped to make this a night of celebration for the man who had led the franchise for so long. But when the game began, Richard Jefferson and the Nets would look to crash David Robinson's retirement party. Off now quickly to Kidd. Kidd whips it over to a cutting Jefferson for the layup. What a brilliant play that time. And it's all New Jersey right now. Kenyon Martin long range. Jefferson hammers it home. The Richard Jefferson show is in full flight here. The lead is double figures for the Nets. But as they had done so many times before, the tandem of Duncan and Robinson would carry the Spurs. Cuts to the free throw line, back to Tim inside, off the Robinson slam dunk. And with the game in danger of slipping away early, they would battle to keep San Antonio within striking distance. He's going to take it inside, Duncan loses the ball, picks it back up, shot off the side of the backboard, gets the offensive rebound, puts up a shot, scores, and he is fouled. He went up strong that time and showed some emotion. Could be the play to get him back in the game. But every time the Spurs got close, the Nets would pull away once again. Leading by nine points midway through the fourth quarter, New Jersey was in total command. Here's a scoop for all you Spurs fans. The Nets aren't going away. And it was starting to seem as if a seventh game was inevitable. We're turning the ball over like crazy because everybody's trying to make great plays. Think more about hitting the next open man. We got open men all over the court, but we got guys on a dribble trying to make all these great plays. Get the ball moving. All season, the Spurs had relied on a total team effort. And now, all their ingredients would come together in one final rally. Dug it against Kenyon Martin. One dribble, back out front now to Ginobili. Left wing, Jackson for three. It's good! Steven Jackson knocks down the three-pointer. Maybe that can start a little run here for the Spurs. Back inside of Martin. Blocked by Duncan. That's his 31st block shot of this series. That's a new record. Kicking out of Jackson, the three. Yes, Steven Jackson has just made this a two-point game. 72-70. The Nets are in deep trouble here. Kenyon Martin trying to hold his ground. They kick it back. Jackson going again. He's got it. He's hit three consecutive three balls. And the Spurs now in a 19-0 run. And they're pulling away. They lead by 10. It's all falling apart for the Nets. The Spurs can almost smell it. Claxton splits the D, loses it, and Robinson is there again. Claxton's 15 footer. Yeah, baby. Get the champagne ready, baby. The Admiral ship is coming in. It was the end of an incredible journey for David Robinson and an improbable one for the Spurs themselves as they brought a second NBA title to San Antonio. Remember the Alamo and remember this moment. The San Antonio Spurs are NBA world champions. Let the fiesta begin. And as you look out in the middle of the floor and you see David Robinson, you can only think nice guys don't always finish last. David Robinson has retired an NBA champion. The trophy is going to sit on the shelf somewhere. You know, the, the championship ring, that's going to be in the drawer collecting dust somewhere. But the, the memories, the time that you have with your, you know, my boys standing up there on the stage, I and mean, they're going to remember that. Tim Duncan's giving them a high five. You know, they're jumping around. They're wearing, you know, wearing their little Spurs caps, and you know, streamers falling down. And, and it's it's going to be a great memory for them, and uh, and just one of the great memories for me. To a team that had the best record in the league, that had the coach of the year the repeat MVP, and now this. Congratulations, San Antonio, for your 2003 NBA champion, 
San Antonio Spurs. We gotta talk about that first floor. You guys pissed me off in that first floor. Oh, 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 oh. That's the worst first floor I ever saw in my life. It was the best floor, though. When you spend that kind of time with people uh, that long, uh, and they're people you enjoy being with, and that show the character that they do, and have the senses of humor that they do, uh, it becomes a big part of your life. This could be more happy for the guys. And especially for David, because he had a, just an awesome game uh, to end his career, and that's pretty special. And there's some guys, though, that are uncoachable. You know, you just saw one right there. The guy, the big guy, just walked by. Nice jersey. I know, my last jersey. It's all stained with champagne. <laughs> it stinks now. We'll have to wash it. And I can use it when I grow up? Yeah, you can use it when you grow up, all right? It's a little big right now, but you'll grow into it. I started showing my bling bling. This final game against the New Jersey Nets. Two block shots shot of the first ever quadruple double in NBA Finals history. The one, the only, our MVP, Tim Duncan. To all of you that support us throughout the year, this is impossible without you. So thank you very much. Thank you for everything. I said this a lot of times, but there is no better way that I can end my career than to see your cheering, smiling faces and happy about this championship. I thank you, San Antonio. Thank you for this awesome 14 years. It has been unbelievable.